No, one out of four. They, they steadily got better. Welcome to Still Untitled, the Adam Savage Project. I'm Will. I am Adam. And I'm Norm. Norm, are you pretty sure that's recording? It is. Abs- you see the bottom red? Oh, the red on the bottom left? Absolutely recording. Okay, I believe you. Um, <laughs> I just silenced my smarch. Are your phones quiet, guys? My phone is quiet, although I've been having this kind of weird... I wouldn't say renaissance, but I've been, okay, a renaissance of making my phone stop telling me stuff. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I have a column that is like three quarters written that then Joanna Stern wrote exactly the same thing and posted. So I have to figure out a way to like rework it. So it's not the same post. The best, the single best thing you can do to make yourself more sane is get rid of every notification except for text, email from like the two or three people that you actually need to know when they email you immediately. Yes. And and like any other like we use Slack at the office for our inner right. office communication. So we have that stuff turned on. Everything else is off and it is lovely. Yeah, I don't no. I don't I don't know if you're in the market for a smartwatch. Uh well it's happening. I it's happening. It's on its way. It's <laughs> happening. <laughs> a Here's smarch. A smarch. That, that is a terrible word. Well, you know, it's the thirteenth month and <laughs> also it is your your the, the Mondra Green for smartwatch or portmanteau, whatever. Oh, um nice. Well we, done. So the thing about trimming your notifications yes. and using the smartwatch is that then when it buzzes, when you get the, the little you know tap on your hand, it, you know it's okay to be rude. Right. The problem is you have to communicate that to other people because then they just think that you're a, a kind of a jerk if you're always looking well, at your watch. Well, you got to do, do this way. Oh, the, the, uh, it, the most important thing about wearing a smartwatch, Adam, is you don't hold it to your face. Like so, with your elbow up. That's it, it, mine doesn't turn on if I don't do that. How come? You got to hold it up to look cool. You got to Michael Knight cool. it. You got to do the oh. Dick yeah. Tracy. You got to do Did, the Dick Tracy. When are they going to do the Dick Tracy face mod? Version three. I want that. Version. Three. I want to. Oh, you, you just want to have a thing that sticks on over the top? Yeah. Oh, oh no, I just want to. I want it to look like the Dick Tracy watch. We with could a little speaker grill. We could make a thing that goes over top of it. No, 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 no. I want to. <laughs> you want the screen? <laughs> <I> want, <laughs> what Will's getting at is you can't add <laughs> custom screens. What the hell, Apple? No, no. I think what we should do is, is like 3D print a cover that snaps on. Yeah, well, and then you can have the, the you have exactly what you want. Yeah, but everything you ever dreamed of. No. <laughs> um, like James Bond, a watch that can print out text. Wait, like what? Printer paper. And Roger had a, Moore had a, a watch. Oh, that, I believe Moore. it was in Moonraker that can actually print it out. The it number like a of ludicrous watch. things watches did in Bond. Yeah, the magnet that made the bullets go what was the one in uh you the the one on the train from russia with love yeah the lasers the right. laser watch that There's opens the two floor laser watches there was also a laser watch in you only live twice the sean connery non-broccoli reboot Ooh. of bond yeah which is actually no, 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 no. You talk, is that never say never again. never say never oh, right. again kim which basinger is, right. reboot of thunderball right was it thunderball or casino uh, thunderball. it's thunderball okay. and klaus maria brandauer a terrific unsung actor from the 80s was a phenomenal villain. What's your feeling on Spectre, the new the new Daniel Craig Bond? Have you well, seen trailers and stuff yeah, for that yet? Yeah, it looks very exciting, but they always do. It's true. I, I, I do like that they're uh, keeping the same director. Um, so even that teaser... It's a real director, They don't right? have the same DP. They, don't get, they didn't get Roger oh, Deakins. Oh, they didn't get Deakins He's back. He's busy. Oh. Yeah. That makes me sad. Oh, I yeah. know, because the last... But they have this, these great, like, and even in teaser shots that evoke uh, the previous movies, like, from... Casino, or not Casino Royale, the last one. Um, Skyfall. Skyfall, one of the great shots when he's in, I think, Macau and on that boat with yeah. all the lanterns. And they have a similar shot of him on this lake, except going away from the camera's wide shots. The thing that I loved about Skyfall was all those big, wide open shots. Like when he's in the in the Scottish Moors or wherever, wherever yeah. Skyfall was, it's just little tiny people yeah. and this huge expanse of empty land. Lots of awesome. scale. And, you know, I, I love Skyfall just for what it is, but also the apology that it is for Quantum of Solace. I, Thank you, Rider Strike. <laughs> yeah, I, I just I was I was sad to see Ju- sorry, spoilers by the way. I was sad to see Judy Dench go. I know. Um, we're we're getting uh, we had spoilers last week that we didn't. It was an old podcast, and oh, we didn't tell people there. Was we spoilers. didn't warn people that we were going to spoil the end of The Martian <laughs> in the first maybe five minutes of the podcast. Oh, no, so apologies, sorry about that. Oh guys. no. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think we're outside the spoiler statute of limitations for the book, but maybe the movie wasn't announced. We actually recorded that episode last October, so I don't know if we knew there was going to be a movie yet at that point. So anyway. The statute uh, of limitations our, our on bad. remembering what we talked about yes. expired. Well, I listened to it in the car on the way in, but I didn't note the spoiler. So anyway. Anyway. Um, 
what 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 should we talk about? You today, guys have been gentlemen? you guys have been to. I'm very jealous that you went to America's Test Kitchen. Oh, Joey and I went. Yeah, yeah. that that well, okay. Actually, I'm jealous of both of you because Star Wars Celebration and America's Test Kitchen. I wanted to do both of those, and this I might be a good time to fill you in on our travels. Yeah, well, we, we never we yeah. never get to do that. No. You said you so you said you were on tour, but you said this was kind of a hold up, not doing a whole lot tour. Well, so just to make the story as short as possible. This is Jamie's last year of touring. He he loves the fan interaction, but he wants to put his energy into the projects that he's working on. So come 2016, he won't be touring anymore, but I will still be touring. So there was a lot of work to do during this tour, both to chronicle what we've built over time and start to work on the structure and the, the the components that will be the stuff that I take out on the road in 2016 and into the future. So, so this, this is the last hurrah. So lots of work in the bus, lots of drawing, lots of sketching, lots of writing, lots of calling people and mm. sort of starting to build this structure now. And then I you didn't also get did, out much. You also did some stuff for us, which we'll show real soon. Yeah, soon. It's very um, exciting. Really like the exciting. new the new premium membership perk if yeah. you sub is awesome people are going to go nuts for it this year um and i used some cool technology actually i, I brought a pico projector into the mix to help me with really? some yeah oh. interesting so yeah, and wait get this when you go to wire cutter and you look up best pico projector the first thing they say is don't buy a pico projector i love that but the second thing they say is astonishingly and they're shocked too the best one on the market right now is a brookstone wow I am surprised. Yeah, I know. It's, like, it's the, sharp, the sharper image is the best model. <laughs> that's that's. What I didn't even know Bristol's still around. I know, they are. Yeah, that's okay. Still so selling bean pills. Those. But yeah, exactly. you guys, uh, did you say bean pills? No, no, I was gonna say uh, is, is the inflatable neck pillows. memory memory <laughs> memory foam yeah. pillows. The, the thing uh, the thing that they do that I love is that enormous wedge that you put on. You fold down the tray on the airplane. My and mom bought just, one of those. Did you, did you, does it she work? She never used it. I, I, you, I'd be uh, the inflatable West. <laughs> like if you're on the aisle and somebody inside needs to go to the bathroom, where do you put that thing when you get up? They'd, I have no idea. There's no butt or crotch choice. You just have to like hold it up. And it's a disaster. All anyway. right. So your travels. Um, so let's see. In March, uh, Joey and I went to Boston for PAX East. And we don't get to Boston that often, you know, for the site. Yeah. So... Um, while we were there, we've been trying, there's a couple of companies we've been trying to see for a long time. One was America's Test. We've been trying to get into Boston Robotics, but now that they're a part of Google, I don't know if that's ever going to happen. <laughs> um, I want to see the few terrifying future of our robotic overlords uh, up front. Can people, can people please stop giving robots weapons? I don't think they give robots weapons. Well, I mean, the, the, the articulated legs like that. I'm just, I get really, really terrified. Well, Any if they're fast like those robots are, they don't need weapons. They just have pointy pointy limbs, and we're I, all. Boned. I've told Jamie that he can design all the robots he wants, but I personally will, will physically not allow him to put a weapon on a robot. I, I appreciate I, that. I, yeah. Too late. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He put a spinning blade on a quadcopter. Oh, hey, that was for lawn work. Yeah. That's right. That's, that's right. not a weapon. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll and how you use it. Uh, so Will went to uh, America. I went to America's Test, Test Kitchen. Kitchen. Yeah. Um, which I, like we've talked about America's Test Kitchen before on the podcast, but it is. Literally, how I learned to cook was by watching America's Test Kitchen and reading Cooks Illustrated. And Cooks Illustrated is one of the great, we've talked about it on the podcast before, one of the greatest magazines, especially for those empirically minded. I, well, and as somebody... That is who, to say, sentient humans. People who people who should have... Yeah, that's yeah. sentient humans is a good way to describe <laughs> them. Um, for people who... like for ma I'm a magazine person. I, yeah. I made magazines for 10, 10 or 12 years. And... Like it is my favorite magazine, both because the content is amazing, but because the craft of putting that magazine together is astounding. And they do it all in an ad free context, which is really hard for a magazine. Yeah. Um, it is an amazing piece of work. There's six issues a year or something like that. It's not it's not a massive read. But it um, will just reading one of those issues will make you better. Yeah, we'll make you better. And mm -hmm. and the thing that the thing that's great about them is it's not just recipes. The right side of the of, of an article has the recipe. The left side of the page explains the process that they got to to get to that recipe. So they'll say, you know, if we wanted to make eggplant parmesan, we started out with kind of sad, floppy, right. crappy, like mushy, gross texture eggplant. And then we kind of step back to see what we could do along the way. And they'll talk about... And they'll break it down into components yeah. and address each one. And they'll fail at a few. Like, this was a total disaster. So I was super curious about their process just as a as a, as a industry. You know, yeah. it's, a, it's a big... There's two magazines, a cooking school, the website. And it's all, all these done in the same location. All facility. done in the same place. The show... Both shows come out at the same place. Wow. Um, and, and, like, they... 
it, it was astounding. Like it was really interesting. And so we walked through the whole process about how they do like where they start with recipes. Usually it's like a, a common American classic food right. um, with cook's country. They do more regional stuff. So they'll do like, they'll, they'll replicate recipes from parts of the country that maybe don't like the, the their food hasn't spread. So we mm-hmm. had a Wisconsin butter burger when we were there. I, want one of we, so we can we can make that happen yeah no i read that and looked at that and it was like oh my god i need i need that it turns out <laughs> if you use butter instead of mayonnaise that's a pretty good experience <laughs> in, the, in the food world i totally agree with that yeah um so so uh christopher kimball who's the editor and founder of cooks illustrated and and atk and all that stuff um basically took us on a tour and we talked about their recipe process, which, which we didn't get into the video because it was a little bit, it was a little bit too in the weeds for the for the video. But the recipe like, developing, process. like the, their development process, right? And basically, they'll do up to a hundred iterations. They start, they start with five five variables that they test. Um, so they'll make a control and then four four things that change. Right. Um, when they start with a recipe, and they kind of do that to figure out where they need to do the work, right? Where they need to pay attention, right? right. This is also why they have a best you know, best chocolate chip cookie recipe from 15 years ago. And then they'll update it a couple of times because they'll they'll look at it and they'll think, oh, you know what? We like the tooth on this cookie, but we want that exterior to be a little crunchier. Right. Or we want to have a milk chocolate chip variant like or something You want to like dial that. these different variables and play around with them. Exactly. So they do the initial pass of five recipes of five things. And we showed that in the baked Alaska a little bit. Um, and then then they'll go out. And from there, that kind of informs the direction that they go. And and it doesn't always narrow it down. Sometimes it greatly widens the number of of, of uh, tests that they perform. Yeah. Um, and then to do the actual tests, they have 50, 45, 50 people on staff there at any, on, at any given day. Wow. Um, and they'll do tastings. So the editors and the cooks... <laughs> Um, they will all come down, run down the line. They'll taste it. They'll they'll look at the component that they're supposed to be evaluating, and then they'll also talk about the overall, like the holistic package of, yeah. of what they've made. Um, and usually, it's a one variable test. So, mm-hmm. for for example, with baked Alaska, they did two or three things just to kind of show us to do some TV magic for yeah. us. Yeah. Um, but normally, they if they were testing the meringue to see how well ins- how the well the meringue insulates. They would just do five different kinds of meringue. Oh my god! Um, I want to go and both ingredients I and go process. Work there both ingredients and process. Yeah. <laughs> Can uh, I go work there? I'm sure. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I'll send you. I'll, I'll introduce. Could you I do a stage at America's <laughs> Test Kitchen? <laughs> so, so then after they get something that they think they're pretty comfortable with, they test it on a wide variety of equipment, uh, including high end like ranges that somebody who's a who has a has a oh. hundred and fifty thousand dollar kitchen would have. And then they also have a couple of really beater electric stoves so that if you if you're living in a bad apartment in, in Brooklyn and you just have an electric range, right. they want to know how it works with that. And they do both high end cookware and low end cookware. Most of what they use in the kitchen is the stuff that they test and recommend. Um, they also keep some other stuff just for reference. Um, they use a lot of those Lake Crusette. Uh, uh, Lake Crusade, sorry, um, uh, uh, ceramic lined Dutch right. ovens, yeah, um, which are all black on the bottom. Oh man, of course, uh, right, 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 right. Why not? But yeah, I don't know about you, but my wife and I have spent years scrubbing out the bottom of the of the Dutch oven to keep it nice and relatively clean inside. Oh, and the inside, yeah, black. the inside is black. Ah, so they're fully seasoned. Oh yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it looks yeah. So, um, so then after they do that stuff. Then they send the recipes out to th- to a thousand people, basically. So like the, the it's the fan club essentially, the wow. recipe and testers. People run run they, them at home. Wow. So they're like experimental physicists. Hmm. Right. So they're sending them out. People will test them, give feedback. If they don't get, I think the threshold was like eighty percent approval. Then they go back and work on it more. What? Jeez. Yeah. So that's to indicate. So what's the, is a standard working time on a recipe? Must be three months. It's three or four months. Yeah. So it depends. It, and how much wow. of that is documented? It, it, God, all I the love steps that they're it, doing that. It, it, this is so much aside more from thrilling. the final recipe. This ends up being like a four hundred words of text on the left side of the page. I know. Yeah. So wh- where's all the other stuff? They um they boil it down. I mean they oh. they they find the thing that's interesting about this is it helps them find the stuff that actually matters. And I think that's right. what they te- they tend to focus on. Um, oh. But it was absolutely fascinating. Yeah, I can't imagine I mean, documentation. Uh, they must have an archive of all the records of notes. All, yeah, all the notes. I'm sure. I mean, that's got to be fascinating. I'm sure somebody is digitizing tasting notes all day long. So the couple of times we did a, um, a fundraiser at our house for my kid's school a couple of years ago, and we had a Top Chef competition. Mm-hmm. Um, Tracy Desjardins actually was one of the judges. That makes um, sense. Yeah. Uh, but uh, 
when we did it for the dishes that I was doing, I wanted to make uh, sweet potato fries. And in making them, I, I actually looked up a bunch of recipes online. I, I did exactly this. <laughs> I tried uh, three different methods of getting them crispy. I tried three different oil temperatures and came up with really, I think objectively, the greatest way to cook sweet potato fries. And it was really simple. Yeah. It was uh, cut them into fry shape. I actually have one of those shunk that does the those fry are fun. Yeah. They're like 50 bucks on Amazon. Yeah. Uh, then I soaked them in water for an hour to get starch out. Mm -hmm. Then I dried them off, dusted them in cornstarch, mm -hmm. and then fried them for exactly, is it three or five minutes? I think it's three minutes at a 400 degree oil. That's hot. 390 degrees. The difference between 350 and 390 was massive. Soggy versus that's, crispy. That's yeah. a big variable. Yeah, mm -hmm. at 390 in three minutes, you get these perfectly cooked, crispy on the outside, soft on the inside, and they still, they're still they still good when they're cooling down, unlike that, uh, that fry window. And it was so much, I was thinking about Kimball and America's Test Kitchen the whole time I was doing this because I was empirically proving to myself what was the best way. And now, having done that, I will never forget. Okay, yeah, you can point out I'm forgetting you just three forgot five a minute minutes. ago, but it's okay. <laughs> You'd find out three minutes into the I into wrote the it fry. down. I've yeah. got it at the kitchen. If you don't how, write it down, so it how did you happen. come to that? That recipe. Um, I again, I was comparing like five or six recipes I found online for sweet potato fries, and I do this a lot when I'm cooking off the cuff. I look at what other people have done, and I start to sort of, I have some intuition. You're deducing the principles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think hotter might be better because I got this. Mm -hmm. Definitely want to get the starch out. That's just a standard. And the cornstarch making things crispy, I had done when I cooked. Well, America's, uh, the, 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 their magazine did an article about making steak crispy like a restaurant oh, does okay. without the 500 degree oven. So when you do it with a normal, you know, consumer level oven, you actually freeze the steak and then dust it in cornstarch oh. and put it in the oven and you end up getting this. There's more to it than that, but it was like the cornstarch was the key to it getting It accelerates in my yard or something like yeah. that. Okay. It was very cool. I just used the blowtorch. Ah, uh, uh, oh my God! Have we talked about the Sears all? No, we used the Sears all last week. How yeah. was it? Let's let's. Oh, I have well, your fire suit at my office. At my uh, last I'll week. I've been in. using it for a while now. Yeah. It's fantastic. So the the Sears all is an uh, an item you bolt to the end mm -hmm. of a, a Burns-O-Matic propane torch. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm correct, it was developed by David Chang's people. It was developed by David, David Arnold. Arnold. David, David Arnold. Arnold. Okay. Yes. Who is, uh, he worked for the American Culinary Institute, I think. He's the guy who did the the the, the first best slow egg, uh, you know, emergent circulator, okay. like, breakdown. Here's the difference between 63.1, right. 63.5, 63.6, et A cetera. food scientist. He's a, yeah. yeah, he's a food scientist. So, he works with Dave Chang. So I was, uh, I was lucky enough to have a, one of the friends and family meals at Co., the new co in New York, just as it opened. Thanks. Of all the things you've done, it was that and like the F-18 flight yeah, yeah. and breaking the speed of sound. And, so at yeah. sitting there at the bar at the new Momofuku Co, they break out this thing and to sear the top yeah. of this sort of perfection bit of sushi that he's serving. Oh. And I was like, what is that? And Chang was like, yeah. And then he said, you know, that, they, that he'd been part of the development and they were sold out. Cut to three days later, I'm back home in San Francisco, and Thing 2 comes over to me and says, I think I figured out Julia, my wife's um, Christmas present. I think she'd like one of these. Oh. And he finds oh. the Sears all. How awesome is this the, kid? The, the That's amazing. For figuring that is amazing. it out. And he, he probably like read about 70 it. 70 bucks. Untested. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's 70 bucks for the Sears all, and it's like another 150 or so for the uh, 75 for the burner. The, right. the burns matic head's a little bit expensive. But the principle makes so much sense. When you're using a blowtorch from oh. like creme brulee, it's a fine point, and yeah. you also have the propane taste. They wanted to get both, rid of both of those things for people. Uh, working lines and for catering where you got to blowtorch lots of things at right. once. This increases that surface area. It's, so we should explain yeah. what it is is effectively in a restaurant they keep food warm not in under heat lamps like they did in your school. They use what's called a salamander which mm -hmm. is a sort of a gentle broiler. And that's what the burns matic is. It's a spot broiler mm, uh, yeah. that puts out about a four inch wide gentle flame and there's no better thing for, for uh, burning meringue the top of meringue or searing fish or, or a steak or a steak. Uh, we finished. Uh, we finished a beautiful tart that Julia made recently. Reheating pizza. Fantastic. Reheating grilled cheese. 
Well, you yeah. know the reheating pizza trick, right? Well, I, I do both now. Yeah. Oh, really? Of, slow, oh, what's the other slow trick? on the pan. Uh, an unoiled pan, unoiled on pan, medium, until the medium. cheese is melted. Yep. That like pizza will be as good. No, yeah. regular, regular pan Whichever works, you want. Oh, yeah. It's that pizza longer. will be as good or better than it was better. the day before. Yeah, you get medium you get keeps, real crisp keeps the bottom from oh, burning. like that. Under and a medium, then, yeah. It, once the cheese is bubbling, then I put the sears all and get like top it off just a little bit. So all the sears all is is basically if you if you're familiar with Bunsen burners and yeah. Meeker burners, it's just a head. It's basically a Meeker burner yeah. for your for your propane and torch. It's brilliant. It's an amazing tool. It's one of those few tools. Actually, I gave one to Tracy for Christmas, and I oh. said I've got a kitchen gadget for you that one you don't know about, and two you will actually use. And she oh, was yeah. like, "Shut up." <laughs> Did she use it? Yeah, she. I think she has. Okay. Yeah, it's I'm not I haven't confirmed it is that. my wife when I when, when I whipped that out the first time she was um, in, incredibly skeptical yeah and immediately converted yeah well, the trade-offs are very logical in terms of that and a regular burner it's just that it's it stays hotter longer and right. it's a bigger surface area for you to potentially burn yourself on yeah. and, so as long as you're careful and more, and, a, and a more gentle bandwidth mm-hmm. of what's hot it's just it's fantastic it's really I'm so in love with that tool um so yeah Sears all highly recommended but that was a derail so I, I, when can I go to America's <laughs> Test Kitchen? I we can put when you're in Boston. Okay. Next time, let us know next time. We can I'm there. we can hook you up. So is the space like much more giant than you expected? Um, no, it, it's um. So it's, it's like when like I went a, to Chef Steps, it's, that space looks beautiful on camera, and it's like twice as pretty in person. So she, I've been to Chef Steps too. Yeah. Um, we that'll be up in June, I think. Those okay. videos. So the the Chef Steps is it's a completely different thing, right? Uh, this is dense. This is the people have clearly been working in this place for 20 years now, right, 15 years. Right, right. Um, they have a recipe library that is probably <gasps> four or 5,000 cookbooks oh. all sorted by genre. Do they have like the rolling shelves for that? <laughs> no, 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 no. They have, they have carts. Like stacks they have, of a oh, library. Yeah, exactly. of them. They have like a, like a, put your cookbooks back here. Don't file them back yourself. Cause we want the person oh, to put them back to know where they are. It's yeah. like the in-house real library. library pages that's, and that's, that, that sort them back. I don't know. I don't know about that, but, but that was yeah. my first job. Really? You were yeah, a library I page? I was a library page. Wow. Yeah. Um, they have, so one of the things is it seems like Christopher Kimball went to, um, uh, boarding school in new England and the shock, I know it's hard to believe <laughs> the bow ties. Where do you learn like, about the bow tie? I know. Um, it's just like tying your shoes, Norm. Uh, he, he, uh, the boarding school that he went to, the way that they had classes was around these enormous farm tables, these huge, right. like 25, 30 foot long tables. They had a couple of those tables set up and it's where they do staff meetings yeah. and like editorial meetings where they argue about recipes. And, and cause the other part of it that we didn't talk about here is that when they're going through these, these recipes, they talk through the whole thing from, from soup to nuts. And it's, it's occasionally argumentative is what we were told. Oh, that's what should be. Somewhere. Yeah. I it mean, it should be. I mean, you're going to have your that's that's that just tells me that it works. We argue making magazines was argumentative for we us. We argue yeah. vociferously on Mythbusters all the time. Um, and it's constructive. It's not yeah. destructive. It's not like we're being assholes. It's, it's not ad hominem there. Yeah. You're you're the rule we always had at Maximum PC was you attack the idea and not the person. Right. Uh, because you're a decent human being. Hopefully. <laughs> And it's amazing. You had to cut You got to attack the that. recipe, well, not when you, the cook. When, when we had new people come in, sometimes they would get pissed and feel personally affronted when you would, when you would, when they would say something, and then they would get picked apart. And it, like, it became a thing. Part of the, part of the onboarding process right, was right. letting them know we're going to have conversations. People are going to attack the things that you say. Yeah. It is not a personal attack. It's just the way we make the magazine good. Right. Um, and they do the same thing, which I, I absolutely love. But they have an enormous table for it because oh, they have a huge staff. That's great. So. Um, it was it was a fabulous fabulous like I I was like walking around Disneyland. Oh. For, for and you speaking of Disneyland, yeah. you went to Celebration. Star Wars Celebration. Star Wars Celebration, Have which you been I to a still Star- never been to. I no, had I. been to uh, before this year either. Next year, I'm going next year. Star Wars Celebration. Adam, send me it's an in invite. Europe, dude. It's in, it's it. in London. I'll go. That's oh, more reason, actually. Yeah, oh. I'll figure out the time. Well, if you're going, now you, yeah, you, man. Now we have reasons to go. More reasons Frickin to a. go. Of course, I'm going. Can there's we all make Chewbacca a, costumes? Gotta, what's that? Can we all make Chewbacca costumes and walk around we and like four, tre- four wikis? If you're willing to, it's actually relatively easy to make a Chewbacca costume. It's just ludicrously labor intensive. Do you think we can get Joey to walk around with the camera and the Chewbacca <laughs> costume on? I'm pretty sure you can. They're actually not that hot. Okay. Yeah. Star Wars Celebration was fascinating. Uh, unlike a Comic Con or even a WonderCon. Less stuff there in terms of 
just exhibit space, right? But higher density because it's all Star Wars. And higher. What about costuming and fan interaction? Not even that. Man, not many what? costumes compared to like a, a WonderCon or yeah, something. Yeah, WonderCon, many many fewer because there's only so many. A lot of stormtroopers. Um, don't get me wrong. A lot of stormtroopers, but you don't see too many. You know, weird aliens. They're they're there. Wow. But it wouldn't be more than you know five percent of the population. <gasps> so I'm it, totally shocked. I thought yeah. it would be like eighty percent saturation. People That's, costumes. It's more families. It's a very family oh. friendly show. So if you're in London next year, definitely recommend you going. But but it is a show run and organized by fans completely. Right. So with the support of Lucasfilm. the direct support of Lucasfilm, which boggles the mind. Well, I mean, Lucasfilm has always been very, very, very smart about the fan interaction and about... Um, about being, egal- uh, 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 what do you call it, egalitarian with their IP. Mm. So that their thing is, go ahead and be a fan, make your costume. Just don't try and make a living making those costumes yeah. for other people. Well, they were, they, like with the R2 Builders Club, the support that they gave those those guys early on was shocking. because oh, Some if, of that support came from me. Okay. okay. <laughs> but I mean, Insi- it was an inside job. If I was one of the original Grand Viziers. Of Many both ends Builders died Club. for these R2 <laughs> plans. But like, if you look, if you compare that to like what Fox did with video games in the early 90s when people were making like aliens and alien total conversions for Doom and Quake and stuff like that, they were just shutting that stuff down. Right. Even though it was all, f- f- they weren't making money on it. It was right. just because they wanted to make something cool and use somebody else's IP. Yeah. Lucas could have done that with R2 Builders Club and all the other, all the yep. Stormtrooper armor, the yep. 501st, all that stuff. And instead they've embraced it and it has paid them back in, in Absolutely. you know, a hundredfold. They it had a, a real director of fan relations, Steve Sansweet. And a lot of people forget back in the early 90s, Star Wars was not on top of mind in pop culture. It was, it was, you know, 70s and 80s for sure. It was something that had happened but back in the it past. It happened in the past and it was before the announcement of those other movies uh, but we're feeling that resurgence now Wait, there are more than two Star Wars movies well there's, there's gonna three. be a third one the one with out. Ewoks is okay it's not <laughs> we, we're we gonna watch that we're gonna do a commentary on that because I want to break this down we certainly can I think it is a much better movie than you remember it being there are great moments in that movie great characters I'm sorry the way you phrase your question makes it sound like there's a subjective opinion <laughs> <laughs> oh boy um, <laughs> All I'm saying is that I feel like this is an opinion that might have formed when you were, say, an impressionable 19-year-old. It could be. And is locked in. <laughs> I'll, say, I'll say that Princess Leia has some of her best hair in that third movie. I agree. And the, co- the costuming is I fantastic totally agree. throughout. I'll, I'll say yep. that. The speeder bike chase, yep. amazing. It's great. Amazing chase yeah, scene. They, I think they get all the way to Muir Woods. When I revisited Return of the Jedi yeah. after 10 years away, yeah. I was... I was really surprised. Really? Yes. All right. All right. We'll, we could do a, a, a spoiler cat. Okay. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, ruining the movie. Ruining the Let's movie. Let's call it ruining the movie. Ruining. We change the name of that every time we do it. So why not? Okay. So this yeah. time we'll be salvaging the movie. Um, yeah. uh, so, so in terms of fan relations, things I was surprised at, they had some of the fan prop makers had made props from the new movie right. already. Zan's. Wow, with, really? With the, uh, the, the speeder with support of Lucas. Right. J.J. Uh, oh. Abrams toured uh, the exhibit floor that first day he was there and, oh my and inspected, you know, the big Rancor and, and the speeder bike. He autographed it. And so it, it's even though a lot of that stuff is fan made, it still has that connection to yeah. the original production. Um, Anovos, which... Uh, by the time we yes, Anovis, which we've bought Star Trek outfits from, they had the oh, new yeah. Stormtrooper armor and what? people wearing them on the floor. Serious? Yes. Yeah. So we, we must buy. We know we're getting hooked up with kits. Yes. We're gonna make kits Excellent. of the Anovo Stormtrooper I'm in. armor. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you got be, me in there too. I'm the, oh yes, we're okay, doing good. it. It's a fantastic. They did a fantastic what about thing. Jamie? <laughs> We can get him. A, yeah, we'll get him a stormtrooper outfit. If, if Jamie will wear the stormtrooper, we'll have to stick a mu- we'll have to stick the mustache on the front. You know, the, the new canon is that you know, the, the, the new stormtroopers, none of them are clones now. Uh, like uh, they're all journeymen. They're all they're all just fascists, yes. I guess. Well, maybe, some of them maybe, maybe not. They're just maybe getting a paycheck. And, they're just a little man them, afraid for his job. It's not like they're independent contractors, man. They knew what they were doing. They signed I'm up for the so empire. I'm so sure that the empire runs them like Uber. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> you have to wear this uniform. You you you've got to use the gun we give you. <laughs> We've got some machine right? gunning that has to happen over on. Ho- yeah, did yeah. You, yeah. Did you see this on Reddit? There's somebody at celebration <laughs> posing with a stormtrooper, and he said, "Aim the gun at me," and the stormtrooper points. 
going through the uh, <laughs> Fantastic. I give the Stormtrooper three stars on the app. <laughs> That's good. The New Order app. Um, so you got to see a lot of stuff from the new film then. Yes. Uh, they also... So Anovos had their officially licensed Stormtrooper outfits just roaming the floors. Oh, my God. 500 first members were wearing them. And they liked them. They, they liked them, but off the side, they were inspecting them as well yeah. and doing the same amount of analysis they would on these officially licensed replicas. Was this on the new ones or on the, on the old new ones? ones. Okay. And these are better. These are far better than the rubies. Oh, far better. Oh, far yeah. better. Yeah. Oh, yes. That's a pretty low bar. What, what are the rubies? The ruby stormtrooper has lining all the way around it. They're um, they're not they're not very canon, not very accurate. It's a little like the rubies Vader. It's a high end high end uh, Halloween wear. Yeah. Okay. We'll call that. It's a not sexy stormtrooper though. No. No. Okay. No. 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 <laughs> no I, I think they sell a, those. Not as Bumblebee. Well. Okay. No. no. Oh boy. Uh, they did have costumes and props from the new movie. Too, just on, on display. display. Uh, the longest yeah, I line actually, the show. Somebody on the RPF posted detailed pictures of all the stitching of Han's jacket, which was something I noted in the trailer. That's a nice jacket Han is wearing. Yeah. And I don't know, did Trish, uh, did uh, Trish Bigger do the costumes for the new one? I don't know. I'm not exactly sure. Okay. Uh, they didn't have the credits for the tailors, unfortunately. It looks they had like some the Bespin the... jacket, though, right? It does. Yeah. It's, it's very close. And, you know, Hans gear is all kind of very specifically of a piece. Like, I used to be in some sort of military outfit. Mm. I mean, Joss Whedon borrowed exactly that look for, for, for Mal. Yeah. Yes, yes, for Firefly. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, it's It was a great time. It was oh relaxing, um, you know, the panels were tough to get into because they did a lot of announcements. Gareth Edwards was there to talk about the anthology film, yeah. uh, Rogue One. And I guess this is news after these, the, the event. They kind of work out, out about the second anthology movie. It's Boba Fett. Yeah, I heard this. Oh, really? Boba gets his own Boba, movie. The, origin, the Boba Fett origin story. We already is saw that. The second well, well, he's a little kid, and uh, his dad <laughs> dies, and he's sad. So, so he says, you, you want some rock salt? I, uh, I don't care about that at all. Are you going to do faster with more intensity? <laughs> no, it's the, the more intensity. You know, he's just, so you like Angelina Jolie? No, I'm, uh, that's, that's a, this is a Pat Nos, classic wow. Pat Oswalt bit. We're not going yeah. to complain. Um, so Michael Kaplan's a costume designer, mm. but I don't it's, know. It's a familiar name. Um, yeah, he's, Did you do Watchmen? Wow, um, that, that would be pulling out of like a. Uh, that if you nailed that, I'm going to be very impressed. I'm. Let's see how good Google norms, is. Google is failing. Let's see how good Norm's wetware IMDb is. I've seen a lot of behind the scenes videos, and, and those lower <laughs> third title cards really stick with me. Um, the costumes look fantastic. Yeah. Uh, we talked briefly uh, last week about the Vanity Fair photographs. Did and, you see any oh. chrome troopers? Any chrome troopers? No, no chrome troopers. Ah! Yeah. Fight Club Seven, Blade Runner, Star Trek Two. Blade Runner, you Blade. The, uh, he was in the costume department on Blade Runner, the original Blade Runner. Um, oh. I. That's a long time ago. I'm just saying. He doesn't look that old. It's. He, wow, this is a long list of movies. Well, you're going backwards. Blade so Runner, definitely, 1982. Definitely wow. not not uh not what? Watchmen if it wasn't listed up on top. Um. This is as this is great podcast, yes, guys. For yeah. listeners yes. of the podcast. Okay. Exactly. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I'll just surf, edit that bit out. Surf the web on Michael Kaplan, phones. not the Watchmen costume designer. Norm failed. That's I'm the sorry. important part here. Uh, the the costumes are great. The props are great. Uh, everyone was super enthusiastic. It was yeah. such a, a great feeling. I mean, everyone's a Star Wars fan. The strangest thing yeah. was that they devoted a, a section of the convention, a significant section, to a big tattoo parlor. Whoa. Where they had officially <laughs> licensed, maybe I think a dozen, more than dozen, two dozen tattoo artists doing Star doing Wars. Star Wars tattoos <sighs> in person and packed the God. entire weekend. Could you get a Leonard Nimoy That's tattoo weird. there? I don't think they I would. Don't, I don't know. So let's just point out here that we're in an age where companies feel that it is absolutely paramount to have maximal control over their brand in every possible way. Yeah. And this is the intersection where I personally uh, beat this drum where copyright starts to drift into personal liberty. And that's a longer story for some other time. But right now, let's just point out that one of the most successful media companies in history, which is Lucasfilm, has a completely different, and I wouldn't say laissez-faire, but a much more egalitarian and open relationship with their fans uh, because they understand, they seem to have a philosophy that, that makes it clear that that type of interaction is good for the brand. Uh, and they don't 
piss all over it. And I, I really hope that there are other media companies, hello, Mattel, your assholes about Barbie, uh, that will take that torch and run with it because we're in an age when people can start to be 3D printing their costumes and have access to much more data and information. The replica prop form only gets bigger every year. Uh, and this kind of stuff is the stuff that they discuss a lot on the prop forums of when they get C and D letters. And they do. Yeah. Uh, and it's that's no good. I, I, I really think that Lucasfilm's approach is the right one and the honest one and the generally morally correct one. Well, and like there's a, there's an important there's a couple of distinctions that are really important. There's the distinction between the C&D that's sent by the lawyer just because the lawyer's hired to send C&Ds to people. Yeah. And then I think it's important for the people higher up to 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 make this implicitly OK as much as as much as possible. Like I would love to see in 20 years Avengers cons with i mean we see yeah. i'm look, looking at a captain america shield right now yeah man that could have been a movie prop but it looks so good yeah um i want to see those costumes and i want to see all of these big all these big costume franchises i want to see people wearing these for a long time i totally agree and it only happens if if places like the rpf are allowed to so, operate. and it's the only it's the only way that kids at disneyland at county fairs are going to get to interact with r2d2 right yeah. And so since I'm sure that there are several moguls that listen to this podcast, just listen up. Listen up, moguls. We're telling you how to do your business because clearly we're experts. (laughs) I mean, we're we're the Internet's experts on everything, apparently. (laughs) Um, Yeah. So I guess that's as good a place as I need to wrap it up. Next year I'm going. That's Um, all there is to it. All right. We had had more stops while you were gone. Norm went to WonderCon. Yep. Uh, I went to this coffee convention, which we can talk about some other time, maybe. Wow, and okay. Then, and I went to Monster Palooza as well. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, Chef Steps coming up soon. That stuff. Those you, you're, those videos are going to blow your mind. Uh, yeah. Um, those and if guys you, are awesome. If you want to see the stuff from Celebration or from America's Test Kitchen, it's on the site right now for the most part. Go so, watch it. Yeah, go watch it. Check it out. Learn how to make a butter burger. Butter burger. Butter makes a burger better. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> Bye.